start the recording. So, okay, the recording started, and hopefully, you know, it'll all it'll work this time. Um, certainly, stop me at any time. You know, if you have questions, since just you and and John, I don't know if he can um, see what I'm doing. Ah, and he's typing here, so maybe he can hear. Hopefully, but just can't talk. Great. That's great. So if you have any questions also, John, just go ahead and, and, and type them into the, um, the message area. So um, this one is on groups. And, you know, there's a lot of different parts to groups. Um, we're going to start with just how do you create a group. Um, so in Angel, groups were teams, same concept. Uh, and again, the, the idea here is for you to be able to create um, a group project for your students and use the learning management platform, use my courses um, to kind of manage that and have a place for them to, to communicate possibly. Um, but, but you can use groups for, for other things too, um, you know, in the system. So I'm going to show you, you know, again, how to start uh, creating groups. I'm going to show you two different ways, um, two different kinds of groups uh, in, in creating these. So to do groups, you start on the communication tab on the nav bar and you go down the groups. And when you come into a group, it works a little differently than Angel. In that Angel, it was just teams and you created a team for this and another team for that. Here, you have to create what's called a category. And, and the idea of a category is kind of a way to group your groups in a sense. So if you're going to just do one kind of group project, then you only have to create a single category. And then within that category, it will create the different teams with, within that category. I know they just with, kind of went roundabout and saying the same thing. Um, but if you had, for example, um, maybe you had a, a group project on project one doing some kind of thing in your class, and then you had another group project that you wanted the students to do, and you wanted different teams on there or different groups, you, you would create a second category and create a second set of teams or, or groups for the students. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this new category. And this is where you start with creating a category. And you give the category a name. In, in this particular case, I'm just going to call it, let's say, you know, project, um, you know, group project one. And I'm going to do this one with uh, no discussions because you'll see we're going to do two of these or drop boxes uh, because you can actually create group projects and also at the same time uh, set up a, a set of discussions and drop boxes. So the next thing you would want to do is maybe give a description. You don't have to. If you don't want to, there's no reason to. But if you want to give a description for yourself, if you're creating set different categories of groups, uh, you may want to do that. And then the next thing, which is the more important thing, and this is where it gets a little kind of interesting and unusual, is the different kinds of enrollment types. So this is very different than Angel. So I'm going to try to go through each one and then stop and see if you have any questions about that. So the first one is number of groups, no auto enrollment. So what that means is I say, I want three groups, but I'm going to enroll the students myself. I'm not going to have uh, my courses actually enroll them randomly. It's going to be me that's going to enroll them. And that's a little bit more work. But you know, in some cases, if you're teaching a face-to-face -face class and you still want to use the system, and maybe you know which students you know, would work best together and which ones maybe wouldn't, you may want to use the, uh, the no auto enrollment. But I'm going to also show you that if you allow the system to enroll them, you can actually move them around. So that's something else that you can do. The second one is groups of numbers. So I want um, a groups of, let's say, four students each. And in these, partic in these two particular cases, groups of number and number of groups, the D2L actually does the enrolling for you. Uh, the second one, the next one is number of groups, saying that I want three groups. And if I have, let's say, 15 students, it'll put five students on each group. If I have 16 students, it'll put five students on each group and have one student with one, you know, one group with one student. So it's going to automatically just even it out, you know, in, in random. 
The next three are really interesting and, again, very different than uh, what Angel provided. And this is groups of number, but it's self-enrollment. So these next three allow the student to actually enroll themselves. So if I have groups of number, you know, I want groups of three students each, then the student would go in, choose the groups that they want, and then when it reaches the three, the, the three, three students pick that group, that group closes and the students can no longer choose that group. You know, the nice thing about this kind of thing is, um, I mean, as an example, would be um, our online speech classes, for example, where during the week uh, of speeches, the speech instructor has the students choose a particular time. So they would create a category here, you know, for speeches for the week. And then when they would say, allow the students to choose, you know, I want four students or six students, you know, for this time, six students for this time, and let the students choose their own time. Uh, without the instructor having to choose them for them. Uh, the next one is number of groups, and again, it's self-enrollment, where I say, give me four groups, um, and, and it will then put four groups in there, and the students pick one of those four groups. And then the weird one is number of groups of numbers. So I want three groups of two, or three groups of three, and again, allow the students self-enrollment. Uh, what I'm going to do just for ease of... Um, sake here is just groups of number. Is there any questions about kind of how the, the different kinds of enrollment types? Does that make some sense? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so you got you get a lot more choices here, which is a lot of things in this product. You get a lot of choices. So when I choose groups of number, it says, okay, how many number of users do I want? Well, I'm going to just say three in here. And then you'll notice it gives you a couple other choices here. Um, under the advanced properties. One is to randomize the users in group, and that's checked by default, and I like that. The other one is auto-enroll new users. Uh, this is a, a useful one if you are setting up this group at the beginning of the semester. So let's say it's the first week and students are going to be coming into this into the course in the first week and some may drop. So as students uh, enroll, it will automatically put the students into a group without you having to enroll them yourselves. If it's after the you know drop ad period, then you know you may not want that checked. I'll just leave it unchecked for now, and then we'll come back to these two choices where I can set up discussion areas and drop boxes immediately. So you don't have to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click save on this, and when I click save, it then takes me back into the manage groups area, and you'll notice right here where this is my one category. Right now I only have one, but I could have another. And then it automatically will create the number of groups. I said three, three students in each group. So I happen to have, you know, uh, 13 students in this class. And it lets me see this immediately. And I can then choose, I can click right here to see who's in these particular groups by clicking on each of the students. So I can see that these particular students are in this group. And that's the way to see who's in each group. If I wanted to change the names of the groups, which you know you may want to, because this it just creates these generic names. You know, in Angel, you had the choice right there to say, oh, I want this to be team, and then put team, you know, one, team three, whatever. It would actually you can actually put the name on there. If I click on the on the name of the group, this is where I can actually change the name of the group and call it, you know, group one, and maybe call it red team or something like that and go ahead and save that and then you can see it then put it down here as red team now the other thing that you can do in this particular space is you know this one student is kind of this outlier and you know it's not really good to have only one student in a group it makes no sense so one of the things you would do and again it comes down to these little down arrows and the wonderful little context menus if you click that on the name of the uh, the group itself you click on enrolled users you're going to get to this other interface that's kind of nice that you can get to see all of the students and you'll get to see which students are on which team so i can see here that this train 32 is in group five that makes no sense so i'm going to uncheck that and move that student into another group this sure. little icon means that they've been enrolled into at least one group they can be enrolled in multiple groups also. You can have students in more than one group if you want.
Um, and so you can see right now, if I go and save this, it then takes me back and then I see that this has zero. I then can checkbox that and click delete and I can go ahead and delete that group. Now I have my groups here like that. So that's how you create groups. Um, you know, what you can do in this interface also is if you want, you can actually checkbox the name. You can click email and this will email everybody that's just in that group. So that's another way to send an email. I'll show you the interface from a student perspective after we create the second set of category um, groups and let you see kind of what a student can see also. So any questions on creating groups? I mean, we really don't get into what you can use them for, obviously, but uh, there's a lot of things that you can use them for in, in, in my courses. I mean, you can restrict certain pieces of content to a specific team. You can um, restrict um, when certain groups can uh, have access to drop boxes and those kinds of things. So there's a lot of things you can do with groups. Um, and again, using them for a, a project, the second way we're going to do this by adding discussions and drop boxes is maybe makes more sense. All right. Any questions about that? No. Okay. So I want to go ahead and create a new category. So this is another set of groups. And in this case, I'm going to call this group project two. There. Why isn't it going over there? project two and I'm going to have discussions and drop boxes um, in this case I'll choose number of groups which is again so it's just a number of groups and I'll choose three groups and in this particular case I'm gonna go ahead and set up discussion areas and set up Dropbox folders so in this particular case I want to have a, a space for the students to communicate with each other as a group and then students to be able to submit something to a Dropbox. I'm going to click Save, and now it's going to take me to a new interface. What it's doing next is it's, got, it's going to ask me to set up the discussion area. So I have to choose a, a forum for my discussions to go in. And so now we're going to come back to some of the training where we talked about in discussions, you have uh, forums, topics, and threads. So we have to have these topics that the group project these groups are going to be set up into into a forum and it's really kind of best if you're doing a group project to probably create a new forum and call it you know project two you know or let's say group project two I'm not going to use anything in the description I'm going to go ahead and save that and then I'm going to go ahead and click create and next the next thing is I'm going to create a Dropbox this is a group Dropbox, so I'll call it Group Project 2 Dropbox. And this is just like if I was creating a Dropbox, you know, without being a group. Uh, I can use and enable the originality check. Um, I can actually add it to the gradebook. So normally you'd want to, so I'll click New Grade Item here. And I'll call it again Group 2 Project. And the thing about that's interesting, um, and I'll leave it at uh, you know 10 points let's do 20 points and I'll just go ahead and click Save on that the interesting thing about creating the group Dropbox is that you it creates a single Dropbox and then you can have the team leader submit to the Dropbox and when you grade the Dropbox it grades it for everybody on that team oh. That's nice. So that's really, yeah, that's different than what's in Angel. In Angel, you, you, you could not, you'd have to have put the grade in for each individual person on the team. In this particular case, you actually, it'll grade it for everybody. You know, here's where you put your instructions, you know, do this. And you can attach a file, and then again, you can use the submission options. These things are all, again, part, if you were creating a Dropbox, would be the same kind of properties. I'll go ahead and click create. It'll say, oh, everything is done. It created all those things. I'll go and create, and this is bizarro world because where is save and close? No, click cancel, but it actually did create it. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It is weird. And, and there's a lot of places in D2L that there isn't this save and close. 
So now I come back and again, you'll notice if I choose this category, again, this is what I'm talking, this is an organizational thing. So it's real important when you start thinking about um, wanting to use groups in this product to start thinking about how I want them organized. How am I gonna do it? Am I gonna have a group project every two weeks? Maybe I'll have different categories for each of those group projects with different students. Or am I just doing one group project for the semester? You know, you really gotta think about that up front. And then I'll go ahead and choose on that category. And now you'll get to see that there's a Dropbox connected to it and a discussion connected to it. And if I go up, and again, if I want to see the enrollment, I can click on that context menu and click on the enrollment. And I can move the students around as much as I want. Now I'll go ahead over to the discussion area. So you can see now that it created my discussion forum and it created three topics. Um, for each student and it'll say group section restrictions and I'm going to go impersonate a student so you can see this okay. um, if I go up to the drop boxes now you'll notice that now I have this new icon which is for a group submission this tells me that this is a group submission a single drop box this tells me it's connected to the grade book and when the grades are put when it when it's put in there uh, whatever team put that in the t that team will get that grade um, now, you know it's not connected to the lessons yet, but you can do that, you know, like you normally do in, if we did that in module 10 of our training, where you had to connect stuff, you know, that you already created. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this from the student perspective. I'm going to go in as the SPC demo student and go and impersonate that SPC demo student. Oh, and I forgot what team the SPC demo student is. Well, it'll show you. So if I go to content. And, and discussions, you'll see that the SPC demo student is only in group one. So the students can only see the group that they're in. Oh, okay. And they can't see anything else. Now, if the students want to see kind of who, you know, what, where their members are, who, they're, who are the other members in their group, they would have to go up to communication and groups. And then you'll see that in this case, they can click right here and I can see, oh, there's my members of my group. Mm -hmm. And they also have the ability right here to send an email. Oh, that's nice. So they can click right here. So this is just a, a nice way for them to be able to communicate with each other. Um, and it doesn't matter if you've created Dropbox or discussions. Again, if they're just doing, you know, they don't, you know, there isn't a Dropbox or discussion, it's right here. And they can also get to the group topic also right here. Um, and again, with the Dropbox, they can come here and you can see that this is a team Dropbox. So if I'm team one and I submit to this, you know, and then if I grade this, everybody on team one would have the same grade. And I think we're, and I, and I thought about this, that we probably need a quick guide on how to, you know, grade a um, Dropbox folder, you know, because again, we're trying to keep these short and and concise so that you don't get overwhelmed with too much information. Um, Good idea. So, so that's, you know, so that's essentially, you know, how groups, how you create groups, you know, how you can manage groups. You know, I mean, there is another thing here where you can actually edit, you know, add another group if you wanted to, and then you can enroll other move students around. So just because you created it randomly doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and modify it at another time um, with, with the group project. Any questions? Not me. Frank, do you have anything? I mean, so, you know, I mean, using groups is, it's a good practice, you know, I mean, and, and even if you're teaching face to face, you know, this, this is a, again, you can use, utilize the, the tools here to help you know, first form those groups and then even mitigate the groups. You know what? I think I want to do something just be, since we have a, just a little bit of time. I want to show you from the student perspective how self-enroll works because it's really kind of interesting. Okay. So if I'm going to choose self-enroll and I'm going to say, you know, three students on a group and I'm not going to set up any Dropbox. I'm just going to go ahead and let you see how students do this. So now you'll see that I, there's there's five groups. I said, give me, you know, five groups. And now what a student would do, oops, sorry. Uh, let me go back to the class list. 
So it's kind of an interesting, you know, it's kind of a training thing from a student perspective. But the student would go to communication in groups and they would see, oh, note, enroll in self-enroll, whatever the name of the group is. I called it self-enroll. And then they click choose a group. Uh, I'm going to be in, and they can see who the members are. So I'm going to choose group one or group four, and I'm going to click select. And now I'm in that group. And notice the student can't edit that. Once they're in there, they're there. So when another student comes in, they would be able to see, oh, that student enrolled into that group. And I think that they can see, um, you know what, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with my other account so that you can, so that I can go in and impersonate because my, with my IDT account, I can impersonate anybody. So, so you can see what it looks like again from another student. Uh, and it's this one. So I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, Ned Stark here. I'm going to impersonate Ned. Ned comes in. Ned says, "I want to be on a group." So self enroll. And look, Ned can see. Uh, oh, SPC demo. I like SPC demo. We want to work together. So Ned can select that group, right? And remember, I so so I think I I made it up to three for each group. So. I'm going to go ahead and just do this one more time. Train, impersonate. So it's really, again, a training thing from a student perspective. If you're going to use self-enrollment to know the student has to go to communication and group. And I'll choose that group. And now that I group should be full. So if I think that's how I did it, I can't even, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> So if I did do it right, uh, yep, see, it's full. Yep. So that's a, I think this is a really cool thing personally. I mean, especially when, you know, allow students, I mean, it is good. Of course, you, sometimes you want, you know, want groups to be diverse <laughs> and that's what the random thing will do. But in some cases, maybe you want students, you know, who, who know each other to work together. Sometimes it doesn't work well. I, I mean, you know, I think we've all been through that. I know I was in my college days <laughs> where right. it's like, OK, why am I working with my friend? <laughs> it's not working well. <laughs> so that's groups. And that was something a little extra just to show you that self-enrollment, because I think that's a cool little feature that, you know, um, takes the burden off of you in creating the groups and puts the burden and responsibility on the student, um, you know, for doing it. Any, any last questions? No, very good. Thank you very much. Great. That was great. Well, again, as I said, we'll be um, ramping up much more in January, um, you know, doing many more quick guides. And I do want to just point out that, um, as the quick guides, as I'm creating them, I'm putting them up into our, uh, on our blog. And so just because we're not doing a, a webinar doesn't mean you can't go I just mouse over my courses and go to the quick guides. Okay. And you'll see that I've started putting the uh, grade book ones up there. And again, eventually we'll have um, webinars on those because we get into a little bit more, you know, detail on the webinars, but I'm going to have a whole slew of them on the grade book um, and 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 because the grade book is an interesting space in there um, and as we build them they'll they'll show up up here so you can always go ahead and access those anytime you want all right yeah how did you get to that again oh so that is www.spcollege slash ols Okay, OLS. It will switch to WITS, which was what our name was. Our name of our department now is Online Learning and Services. Oh, okay. OLS. Okay, yeah. didn't know that. Mouse over my courses. And we're going to clean this up as soon as we get through the migration. And then Quick Guides is right there. And the recorded sessions are right next to it. Okay, got it. Perfect. And so, and again, um, I'll be adding, adding to the, this as I build them. And uh, just because I don't think it's any reason to keep them hidden, you know, they're, uh, I think they're going to be useful for you all. And again, um, they're, they're really targeted and small. All right. Well, thank you all.
Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the help on the picture thing. No, no worries. That's why, why we're here. This, is, this really helps. I'm glad. Well, have a good evening. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.